Skip it! I've done lost the plot! Skip the salad and arguably the most iconic ship not named the Enterprise and Star Joe Fleet Command. And I say you should skip it. Am I crazy? Have I gone loco? Maybe. Or you should just watch the video and find out. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Fancy intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! I know. I you guys know. really don't know what you're doing, right do there. you? That's your reaction. Does this guy even know what he's talking about? By the way, Scopely, great job creating that to troll yourselves. I'll be saving that for the foreseeable future. But I know people are coming into this already, and I already know <laughs> we're not even a minute in, and there's probably people commenting, this is a stupid video. This is dumb. Why would you ever do this? And all of that I ask is you take a moment to listen to my logic and decide if it's for you and if you agree with it or disagree. And there's no wrong answer here. But what I want to talk about is the power of the salad and what makes it good. But why, if you are one, a new player to the game, or two, a player who's either returning or starting a new account, because I am very adamant that you want to come be top dog and you want to have a good time, start this game over. I am loving it. I've done it multiple times, but the most recent time has been my favorite. So, because of that, the Saladin might not be the most optimal choice for your gameplay. Now, there's mathematical reasons for this, and let's talk about that in a second, but let's say what the Saladin is, because this video is not trying to say that the Saladin is bad, because it's not. The Saladin is the best PvP ship in the 20s. The Saladin is the best base cracker in the 20s. The Saladin is the best just about everything. It is the top dog. It is the top ship of the 20s in terms of power. And yet, that might not make it the best ship for you because it's not infallible. You can beat it in PvP. You can beat it with a Centurion. It is not the best PvE grinder because PvE grinding is all based on a crew called Pike Moro Chen, which thanks to field training, you can start working on at a very low level complete and no everybody i do not have an update on this i will let y'all know when i have an orion corvette update research new players though and new servers that's not a problem so what is it that is a you know the sound and that's causing me to go well maybe i should skip it like why what is rev's advice what is this logic that he's coming with and it's this right here everything in the 20s wants crystal your vidar wants crystal your horizon wants crystal and those level 30 faction miners they all want crystal which is why i include the valkyries there because it's a romulan ore miner but it wants crystal so one thing that you're going to focus on a lot in the 20s or at least you should be focusing on is specialty ships the name of the game in the 20s is now specialty ships even faction ships so if we scroll 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 let's play a, a wonderful game of how many things do we have to do in the 20s Botany Bay, you get it right before the 20s, but obviously it's going to be a big focus. Fisha, level 23, starts coming in your third aid chest. There's also a mission that happens on Mondays. If you don't have a Fisha, I'm sorry, a Devore, it becomes a Fisha. A Devore, level 23, you got to get the Devore. You got to start working on that. Man, things to do. Oh, wait, level 25, I've also got to get a Meridian, another miner. Man, oh my goodness, what materials does that cost? We're going to worry about that today. Be better sourcing for that, Scopely. Oh, the Vidar, in my opinion, the most important ship in the 20s. Now, specifically the 20s. The reason I say the Vidar is the most important ship in the 20s is one of the few specialty ships you can actually max without those stupid level locks. Looking at you, Franklin, Discovery, everything else. The Vidar you can actually max out immediately. And it's something I would recommend you do. It's great in PvP, and it can be used in every instance. It's actually one of the only specialty ships that's not a one-trick pony. It's good versus Armadas, PvP, PvE, including non-Borg. But anyway, this is not meant to be a hype video for the Vidar, but it does take Crystal. Then we also got to focus on the Discovery, starting at level 20. I've got the skin on it, but ignore the skin. Oh, don't forget the Stella, starting at 28. Very important. Now, more important for the 30s, but still super important. Got to do that. You see all these special ships that we got to start investing in and preparing for, not to mention we got to prepare for the Amalgam. We got to prepare for Mantis and the Defiant. The, the specialty ships are just an overload, and I didn't even mention the humble Franklin. Still sitting right here. Still have an old school USS Franklin. So what you find is you have a lot of specialty ships that take up all of your time. And when I originally used to make 
these videos, one of the things that I used to say and preach a lot was that I would skip the level 30 faction miners for two reasons. One, the faction credit cost. It's just, they're very expensive. And also just the fact that they took materials you needed for other things and the horizon would do just fine. But a lot of things have changed in the game since then. In fact, I need to actually go back and redo the top warships of the 20s and the top warships of the 30s because the game has adjusted so much. And we were actually having this conversation in my Discord and it shocked me that it had been like three years since I made the top 10 warships of the 20s video. And the game economy has adjusted a great deal. For example, better payouts on everything. And, you know, you look at away teams, away teams almost single-handedly has adjusted how I approach the new game. You, you unlock away teams really early, but then you start getting the rainbow missions very early indeed. And here's me running my ROM in the one. Now, real quick, before anybody tries to make a snide comment, no. I realize that you're not level 28 running this mission, getting 2,000 credits. I get that. I'm not dumb, but feel free to call me dumb in the comments. I appreciate your interaction. But what you do start you know, having an opportunity to do, between the Vidar, if you max it out, and between this is to accrue faction credits a lot faster than you used to when these videos first came out. Getting a Saladin back in the day was something that you would actually arguably ride all the way to the 34s and never get anything else. But that's not the case anymore. You won't take the Saladin and get no other ship because you have specialty ships that can operate like that. The Vidar can be a everyday ship. The Stella can be an everyday ship. That's Ultimate DJ, he's obsessed with the thing, but it, it, it truly can. So what we end up having is having to make decisions based on what's available to us. And here are three ships all in a pretty close range of the Saladin that require crystal. This doesn't even include a D3. I'm not including another faction ship. That's a warship. And then let's talk about the cost of the Saladin itself, because what you can do is two of these, you can actually build and start on the third one, the cost of maxing out a Saladin. Again, this is not a Saladin hate video. The Saladin is a fantastic ship, and if you get it, you will be happy with it. But economically, is it the best choice for you in the game? Honestly, it's probably not, because the game is now giving you ways to get multiple things. It's actually not super hard to get the faction credits needed to get this. It's not super hard to get the blueprints needed, because another thing away teams added that I absolutely love is if you start focusing on certain away teams. I'll scroll here at the bottom. Look at the bottom. Away team. Oh, look at this. Blueprints. Blueprints. In fact, that is how your good buddy Reb Duke is working on getting that pylon. There's two more, baby. Yes. So we love having these options now, but because there's more options in the game economy and there's more things that you can try to use to your advantage, there's less need for going after a singular ship and riding it forever. You can really take ships to their tier, enjoy them while you have them, and then move on to the next. And again, the Saladin is great, but the Saladin doesn't have to be great. Because you can do anything that you want to do with the Saladin with something else. For example, I mentioned this earlier, but let's just give you the visual. Let's let you see it. This is your hostile grinding crew. This. This has nothing to do with, this is any ship. If you are fighting a level 51 or under hostile, trader, battleship explorer, any ship, I promise you, I can go out and do the same thing with this right here. And I've been using the Vidar a lot more this past month, obviously because of the Borg. The same thing with this. It's an interceptor, but it's all about the crew. It's all about the research. And one thing we find in this game is the higher level you get, the less ships matter, the more crews matter, and the more research matters. The Saladin is a fantastic ship, and it has a firing pattern that we can take advantage of that very few things in this game have. In fact, let me show that firing pattern because sweet, sweet memories happen when I do this. But the dirty, dirty secret of the Saladin is... Where, where are you at, baby? There you go. The dirty, dirty secret of the Saladin is, as much as I love this big gun, when it's the best base raider, is actually in the 40s. We take this big gun that fires one time every three rounds, and it, it punches hard, but you can crack a base with a Bordas and the Centurion. You don't have to use the Saladin, because what is it about base cracking? Having Rom, the officer, as captain. That's what's important. It's not about the Saladin anymore. Now, back in the day, there wasn't a base raiding crew. It was like Khan, if you had the synergy... But Khan wasn't really effective versus ship, so you came in with a Sally. That's not the name of the game anymore, ladies and gentlemen. The name of the game is officers. There's a whole officer base cracking crew. There's a whole researchers around it. So even though Saladin's great, it's the product of a bygone era. It's a relic. It's a beautiful, still really good antique. 
And in the game 2023, what Star Trek Fleet Command provides you right now, you might be better set to spreading that crystal out instead of dumping it all into one ship if you're in the 20. Now, I'm really curious to hear what everybody else thinks about the video. And whether you agreed or disagreed, hopefully you can acknowledge that there's a logic to what I'm saying. And if you do agree with that, at least, hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. Hopefully this actually spurs on a lot of good conversation because I do think if you start the game now or you're a new player, you get the salad and that's not a bad choice. You're going to enjoy the hell out of that salad. It is a great ship and I will never knock it. I still have one, but I can tell you this. This is the only salad I've ever built and it's on my original account. When I've made new accounts and gotten to the 20s, I've never gone after the salad again. I've always gone after something else because of those grinds. And if you do want to sit in the 20s for a while, you say, hey, I want to focus on officers and upgrading that. Well, then maybe it does make sense to just sit there with a the salad and for a bit. But ultimately, economy wise, just speaking straight materials, this can actually slow you down and prevent you from getting higher up and getting some of those researches done because you're trying to invest in this. And you need to be investing in other things. Anyway, live long and prosper. Stay safe for those space cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, right here. Write a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this strategy. Should you skip the Shaldon or should you keep going with it because of how strong it is in the game? 2023, your decision to make. And uh, yeah, love y'all and appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for supporting me and my family and this channel. Catch you on the next one. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.